Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Fun Bob, and what could be more fun than talking about wool blankets? Wool is fantastic, but why wool? Why do we want wool? It's breathable, it's water resistant, it's antimicrobial, which basically means anti funky smell. It helps keep you warm er, warm ish, while it's wet. It's durable and it's just a fantastic natural fiber. I know some of you are thinking, oh, he forgot to, to mention how itchy it is. Well, that's a sometimes thing. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. So behind me, you see a large selection, a lifetime collection of wool blankets. When you're deciding on a wool blanket, you're gonna need to ask yourself a few questions. What will I be using it for? What price am I willing to pay for a wool blanket? Does weight matter? Does size matter? Does how itchy it is matter to me? All of these things play a role in deciding which one's right for you. So I'm gonna grab the camera, we're gonna to touch on each of these blankets briefly, and I will talk to you about why I organize them in the way that they are, and we're gonna find the right one for you. So let's go. It's really easy to get overwhelmed when you see a pile of blankets like this and you're trying to make a decision on which one to get. But don't overcomplicate it. It's just a blanket. I've organized these from emergency preparedness, camping, home use, and then scattered throughout it, there are some do-it-all blankets. From left to right is fairly similar to price as well, except for these two, these three are a lot cheaper. Starting on the left, we've got the very first wool blanket I had, and it is itchy and cold, and it is the worst. I thought wool was the worst thing ever, and it was also the cheapest. I think it was a $5, four or five bucks. So coming up, we've got another generic army surplus blanket, 80-20 blend, so 80% recycled wool. These are the ones you're going to see a lot of wool peeling up on. Uh, another surplus blanket, similar thing, uh, the Arcturus. This one you can see just... It peels up um, the more you use it. And that's because that's how they get them at such a good price point. It's not the virgin wool, it's the recycled wool. And so the smaller strands will peel up more than the others. But you still get the qualities of wool at a cheaper price. And that's why it's over here in the emergency preparedness. This is the, I don't want to spend a lot, but I want something in that kind of works area. As we move into the camping section, these blankets cost a little more, but they're also a little more functional, a little more comfortable. This Ectos blanket, this is 100% wool. They have other blends. I think there's a 90-10, maybe 80-20 for the Ectos. And this is another recycled wool blanket. It is a great option when you're looking for 100% wool in a more affordable section. These Swiss links are fantastic they're not necessarily surplus, but they're built to look like the surplus ones, and they did a great job, I think. Um, and then this middle area is more of the vintage blanket finds, because those prices vary. Depends on what you find, what condition it's in, and that one really just makes a difference specifically on each individual blanket. We've got the Golden Dawn, another generic four-point uh, this beauty in the middle here is a woolly mammoth. This is a fantastic merino wool blend blanket, and it is super warm, wonderful for camping, a little cheaper than other merino wool blankets that you'll find, but it still maintains its warmth because it has a higher percentage of that wool. We've got the Golden Dawn here and the Wool Old West blanket. As we come this way, we come into more of the vintage Trapper Point blanket, and that one is a great find. This one I think is from the 90s, but it's still super soft, super thick, and a great option for camping or home use. But the reason it's over here, because they kind of get a little more expensive as we go to the right here. Um, you got the classic Hudson Bay Point blankets. Those are fantastic blankets, but you don't always want to bring them camping or just leave them hidden in your emergency preparedness stuff if you're spending that much on a, on a blanket. Now we move into the Pendleton. Even though it's the right size and warmth for camping, it is difficult to keep clean and it feels like it picks up smells fairly easily. 
I think it has something to do with the 80-20 blend. It's 80% wool, but 20% cotton. And for some reason, I think that just holds on to smells. Now, when you come across wool blankets that have this like satiny edge, they're more of the indoor use. Although you could easily bring it outside. This one is a super soft merino wool uh, blend blanket, but it's a little higher priced one. And like I said, it's, it's a lot more difficult to bring those higher priced blankets out into the woods. So these blended blankets are super soft blankets. They've got the merino wool blend in them, but they are not super warm. And I think it has to do with the percentage. We've got the Pu Tian, if that's even how you say it, but it's only 30% wool. I think this Akushla is only 25% merino wool. So even though it is fantastically soft, it is not super warm. But it is a great blanket if you're looking for something as like a supplementary heat. These blankets in the front are in the do everything category. We've got this alpaca wool blanket, which is I've had forever and it is super warm, super soft, fantastic blanket. And it is a, it's a great option, kind of a do everything blanket. And then off to the left here, we have the Polish surplus blankets. I love these. They're, they're only a 55% wool blend but they are really warm and super comfortable. They're not very big, and so if you need something where you're really just trying to wrap up in only a blanket, that's not a great option. And then here in the middle is one of my absolute favorites. It is the Tioga Merino Wool Blanket. And it is made in Ukraine, 100% virgin wool, and it is super soft. I've got a great video on that one. I'll link you to it. So you can get a little more in-depth review on that. So there you have it. The real question is, which is the right one or which is the best wool blanket for you? And I think you have the answer. It depends. When making a decision, the higher up you're willing to pay, the better blanket you're gonna get. But there are still some fantastic affordable options. I hope that helps you make a decision and I hope you don't have more questions than answers at this point. If you absolutely need me to tell you which one of these is the best blanket, we'll have to go with the Hudson Bay Point blanket because who am I to argue with hundreds of years of experience and use. A very close second for me is the Tioga Merino Wool Blend blanket. I absolutely love this. So soft, so warm. The Woolly Mammoth is also a very close do-it-all blanket. The Ectos is also in that list. Very great blankets. All right, thank you for watching and see you next time. A quick afterthought. The emergency prep section are really just the worst. I mean, if you're in an emergency situation, do you really want to make it even worse by having a terrible blanket? You want to be cold and shivering in whatever situation is the emergency. I would, I would much rather have something that I've used, that I've tested out, that keeps me warm, that I, that I know, rather than some crap wool blanket like this. I can say that because you don't know who made this. Terrible. Still smells like tires. This is, I don't even know. 20 years old. This smells like tires after 20 years. I've washed it several times. There's like no more fluff on it. It is the worst blanket. Sorry about that outburst. I'm very passionate about my wool blankets. Remember to like and subscribe for more amazing videos. And then he found one blanket to rule them all. <sighs> there you have it. I hope it helps you make a decision and I hope you don't have more questions than answers at this point. <sighs> Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Fun Bob and today... Line? Line? Anyone? There's no one there. No one there to give me a line. I don't even know. 
It's antimicrobial, which means anti-funky smells, or at least less human. Son of a gun. There you have it.